Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I want to go through thiazide diuretics. And thiazide diuretics work to reduce the amount of sodium and water in the body. And this makes them useful for treating hypertension or high blood pressure and edema. Two examples I'm going to give of thiazide diuretics. The first is bendroflumathiazide and the second is indapamide. And the main indication for thiazide diuretics is hypertension, but they can also be used to treat edema. So to go through the mechanism of action of thiazide diuretics, firstly we need to have a basic understanding of the function of the kidney. So to briefly go through those, the kidney is made up of about 1 million tiny tubes called nephrons. And these nephrons are responsible for filtering and balancing fluid and electrolytes between the blood and the urine. Now the nephron consists of five main landmarks that you need to be aware of. The glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Now the glomerulus and the convoluted tubules are up in the cortex of the kidney and the loop of Henle and the collecting duct pass down into the medulla of the kidney. How it works is water and small molecules are filtered from the blood into what we call the filtrate in the glomerulus. And then varying amounts of water and molecules are reabsorbed from the filtrate into the blood along the tubules, loop of Henle and collecting ducts and what's left in the filtrate becomes the urine. For the purpose of understanding thiazide diuretics, we're most interested in the distal tubule. And the role of the distal tubule is mainly to control the reabsorption of ions from the filtrate into the blood. And water passively follows these ions, particularly it follows sodium. So when extra sodium is absorbed, Water follows it by osmosis. Looking at the epithelial cells of the distal tubule, on the inner membrane of the epithelial cells, which is what we call the luminal side, so the side of the cell that's facing the lumen of the distal tubule, there is a sodium chloride co-transporter molecule. And this molecule is responsible for drawing sodium and chloride from the filtrate into the cell. And then once they're in the cell, this sodium and chloride then diffuse out of the other side of the cell and are reabsorbed into the blood. And this co-transporter molecule is called a thiazide-sensitive sodium chloride co-transporter, and it's the target of action of the thiazide diuretics. What the thiazide diuretics do is they work to block the thiazide sensitive sodium chloride co-transporter and this blocks the reabsorption of sodium and chloride from the filtrate into the blood which means that more sodium and chloride is excreted in the filtrate and into the urine. Because water follows sodium by excreting more sodium water is also excreted so it has a diuretic effect and releases water from the body. There's a few notable side effects that we need to be aware of. Since thiazide diuretics result in further excretion of water and electrolytes, they can lead to dehydration and subsequently acute kidney injury. They can also lead to low chloride levels, low sodium levels and low potassium levels. The loss of water can also cause a higher concentration of glucose, particularly in patients with diabetes. They can also raise the level of calcium and uric acid, which is an important cause of gout, in the blood. Therefore, it's worth using caution when prescribing thiazide diuretics in patients that have diabetes, hypercalcemia or gout. And the loss of blood volume can also lead to postural hypotension. So when the patient stands up, their blood pressure drops. So it's worth being cautious in patients that are older, or are more frail and have lots of comorbidities. So in summary, thiazide diuretics block the action of the sodium chloride co-transporter in the distal tubule of the kidney, and this results in more sodium, chloride, 
and water being excreted in the urine. They're mainly used to treat hypertension, but they can also be used to treat edema, and they should be used with caution in patients that are frail or have other conditions, particularly diabetes, hypercalcemia, and gout. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.